Welcome to 6.5, the last and most important topic in chapter 6 in terms of where we're headed. So sampling distributions and the central limit theorem. So first off, why do we care about this? We care about this because of statistical inference. We want to be able to make accurate decisions about parameters from statistics. And that sounds like we're in a statistics course, so let's translate those two words into what we really care about. Parameters come from populations, statistics come from samples. So let's say this again. Statistical inference means that we want to be able to make accurate decisions about populations from samples. So I've got a sample. I want to know how well that represents the population so that I can make decisions from the statistics about the parameter. So a sampling distribution is how a sample statistic is distributed when repeated trials of size n are taken. So from that population we take samples of size n and we want to talk about the variance within those samples. So a sampling distribution, suppose you have a random variable that has a population mean of mu and a population standard deviation of sigma. If a sample of size n is taken then the sample mean has a mean. The mean of the sample means is the population mean, and the standard deviation of the sample means is the population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Now, both of these formulas are very straightforward. Basically, what this says is that when you sample the mean of the sample means is the same as the population mean, which is nice. The second claim is that the standard deviation of the sample means is simply the population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So in one case the means are the same, in the other case the standard deviation of the sample means is the population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Now, these are so nice that really you don't need an example of using them. They work out perfectly. The central limit theorem is the power behind the rest of the course. If the random variable has a normal distribution, then the sample mean will also be normally distributed. So if you sample from a population that's normally distributed, then the sample mean will also be normally distributed. Remember, we're thinking of x bar as the random variable in that sentence. So basically, we're saying that as we sample many times, those x bars will themselves be normally distributed. If the random variable has any distribution, the distribution of the sample means will become normally distributed as n increases. So you might say, well, how big does n have to be so that the sample means will be normally distributed even if the population that they were drawn from wasn't? And for us, we're going to say 30 or more gets us pretty close to normal. Two extraordinary results, the mean and the standard deviation of a sampling distribution and the central limit theorem. 30 is a key result here, the idea being that regardless whether the population was normally distributed, the distribution of the sample means will be close enough to normal if the sample size is at least 30.